Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, congrats, Heston. And uh, also, I just wonder what what have the last fifteen hours or so been like for you? Uh, has it kind of set in yet on you being the number two overall pick? You know, it's definitely been really crazy. You know, just all of a sudden it happens. All the moments from the Orioles calling me to getting drafted. So, you know, it's definitely a dream come true and pretty surreal, but I, I think it's starting to set in a little bit more today as I woke up and everything, and, you know, it's it's something I'll never forget for sure. And I, what, have you been able to talk to the Orioles about what the next few days are going to look like for you? Are you going to be able to go out to Baltimore for a physical? And I guess there may not be even minor league season this year, so what, what's the immediate future look like for you? Um, as of right now, uh, I'm not even sure yet. Uh, I talked to a few of their scouts yesterday, but they just congratulated me. They're like, glad you're an Oriole and stuff like that. And then also I talked to Mike Ellis, uh, the GM of the Royals, after they drafted me. And he is the same thing, congratulated me, welcomed me into being an Oriole and all that. And he said, we're going to focus up finishing up the rest of the draft uh, today and tomorrow. And then once that's done, we'll be in touch with you and we'll give you a plan of what's going forward. So, you know, hopefully tomorrow maybe they'll give me a call and I'll know a little bit more on what lies ahead. Appreciate it, Heston. Alyssa? Sorry, sorry, listen, go ahead. You're good. Hey, Heston, congratulations. Uh, hope you got some sleep last night, but got a lot of love from a lot of your teammates and, and former teammates and, and head coach. What was it like to see the outpour of support on social media? Oh, it's unreal. I'm still, I'm still trying to go through uh, quite a bit of it. I probably haven't even seen half of it and just trying to get back to everyone and say thank you and everything. It, it's really cool to be a part of teams at Arkansas where all the guys keep up with you and be a part of also the fan base there where everybody's rooting for you and they're happy to see you accomplish something and you know also all all the guys that I've been there played with you know this wouldn't have happened without them and you know they also helped me get to the level where I'm at. A lot of the analysts and, and scouts talked about your power hitting, your home run power that you have, but how you're able to really develop as a hitter. So as you head into your pro career, what are some things you want to continue to work on? You know, I, I want to try to get better at all parts of my game for sure, but I think the main thing going forward is my plate discipline and swinging at good pitches consistently, and that will help me out the most. And lastly, have you ever been to Baltimore and Inner Harbor and seen Camden Yards? Nope, never been. Uh, you know, I I know where Maryland's it at on the map. That's pretty much it. So, but probably probably go there eventually. So, well, what they say is true. The crab is really good up there. That's how you. Okay, I'll, I'll have to try it out then. Thanks, Heston. Tom. Um, okay. Hey, Heston. Uh, thanks for doing another one of these. Uh, I'm, I'm writing something about the 2018 team next week, and I wanted to get your thoughts. The highlights, what's really stood out to you about that team, and, and did all the, all the positive things and all the big wins outweigh the frustration at the very end? Man, you know, I think the thing was just the dog pile to go to Omaha, that game three in Fayetteville at the Super Regional. That was an unreal moment. That was – what we'd planned for and trained for. And we showed up to Omaha and, you know, made it to the finals. And that was unreal to be able to be in that stadium. And there's like 28,000 fans and 25,000 of them were wearing Arkansas red and cheering us on. That was just, it's a real experience. In my opinion, I think the season was still an amazing season and everything. And it didn't end the way we wanted to, but, you know, looking back, it was still, uh, a great team and we gave it our all and we came up a little bit short and it's something we'll always remember and it's it was a great experience if the analysts are right your teammate Casey Martin will be chosen here pretty soon when the next round gets going and then Casey opens as well have you been in contact with him and what do you think about those guys and their futures too you know uh, they, they actually texted me uh yesterday after I got drafted and they wanted to congratulate me and everything and you know, I'm 
I'm going to be watching the draft again today to see when they go off the board so I can watch their moment and everything. They have great careers ahead of them. They're, they're great guys, and, you know, everybody already knows they're great players. And, you know, I think whatever team drafts them is going to get a great player to help their organization. All right, and one last thing on 2018 World Series. You, can, you knock off two Texas teams, including Arkansas's kind of arch rival Texas, and then you beat the defending champion Florida. Those, those three games, how, how special was that, that little streak you had there? Man, that was unreal to come into Omaha and do damage like that. You know, while I was in that moment and we were there, I really didn't realize the feat of everything we'd done and how hard it really was to accomplish it. And then looking back, you you kind of understand it better of like, wow, like that was that was an impressive team and the way we went in there and clinched clinched our path to the finals was really awesome and you know everybody on the team was just clicking and everything and it was all working thanks Aston. will you have anything you're muted what are you talking about i don't know how this, don't know how this thing is working uh i i got in a, a little bit late have you uh, have you heard from from blaine knight yet heston yep no I, he actually uh he called me yesterday before the draft and he was just touching base. I did not talked to him in a while, and he just wanted to wish me luck. He said, enjoy it, man. It's, it's going to be an amazing time for you. And he's like, I hope the best wherever you go. And, you know, he didn't even say anything about being an Oriole or any of that. But then he called me probably 15 minutes after I got picked, and, you know, he was pumped that I was going to be headed to the Orioles so we could be teammates again. And, you know, I'm pumped too. Me and Blaine were always good friends. and always got along well and you know it's, it's, he's a good guy and also it'll be nice going into a system like that uh knowing Blaine he'll probably take me under his wing again for a little bit and, which will be nice so I, I look back you faced four pitchers that were drafted yesterday during your career at Arkansas which says a lot about what the competition in college, specifically in the SEC, does for 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 young players in in how you either showcase yourself or how you get better than what you'll face what you faced in high school or even what you might have faced in the minor leagues. So you know you you, you faced Hancock, Crochet, Burns, and Cavalli. When you face this type this kind of talent week in week out, how does that help you prepare for what you're going to face? at the next level? You know, I think it's, I think it's huge, the level of competition that we're able to play conference. I think it's the best ever. And yeah, there was four guys that I'd faced drafted yesterday, but there was a handful in the draft before and then the draft before that. And it seems like almost every Friday night you're facing a future first rounder and, you know, they're coming at you with your best stuff and, even guys throwing on Saturday or Sunday are going to come off the board at some time. And everyone's super talented. And to be able to face that level of pitching starting out freshman year for three years really helps all of us elevate our games quickly because you you got to be able to adapt and figure out how to have success off of pitching like that. That's all I got. Congratulations, Heston. Proud of you. Thanks, Bill. Um, Matt Jones. Hey, thanks, Kyle. Hey, Heston, wanted to ask you uh, about when you were recruited by Arkansas. I think you were what something like five foot ten and one hundred and sixty pounds uh, when you committed. How much? I mean, obviously you grew physically, but uh, in what ways do you think you grew as a player? And and, and how much different did you become as a player uh, than than what they recruited you as? Man. I think I changed a lot just because I wasn't done growing or maturing. And Van Horn actually told me when he originally recruited me, he probably saw me as a leadoff hitter, you know, some average, maybe a little power or whatever. But then, you know, I, I, I grew, put on some weight, ended up 6'3", 200 pounds. And, you know, definitely grew as my bat, you know, the power came and everything and then settled into 
the corner outfield and then moved over to the right as my arm got a little bit stronger. And, you know, I say going to Arkansas, all parts of my game really improved just because when you get there, there's a lot of competition. And, you know, it, it brings out the best in everyone when you have competition like that. And it, it makes you want to get better every day. And, you know, every day you'd go in there and the coaches would be doing anything and everything to help you try to reach a new level. Was Tony Patello your lead recruiter? Uh, yes, he uh, he saw me for like five or six games in Dallas, and then he reached out to me and said they're interested. And then after that, I actually went on a unofficial visit, and then after that, Van Horn he didn't offer me when I was on my unofficial. He said he wanted to come out and watch me a little bit, and then after that, he offered me, but Vitello was the first guy that saw me. I wanted to ask you, too, about your, your time in the Connie Mack League and, and how much you felt like maybe you grew up uh, playing that summer. Man, uh, being able to play in the Connie Mack is really cool. The Farmington's a great communi community, and, you know, you, we actually got to play a few games in front of, like, 3,000 fans, which was, which was, like, crazy coming from high school, you know. You, you never play in front of that many, so it kind of gave you a little bit glimpse of maybe what college will be like and playing in front of the fans. And then obviously going to Fayetteville, there's nothing else like it when there's 10,000 fans in Bomb Stadium. And then the last question I had for you, Heston, uh, you had a rough start to your sophomore year. I think the first seven or eight games you weren't hitting very well. And Taylor Smart said he saw something in your leg kick. You worked on it. And it seemed like from that point on, whether it was with – Team USA or fall ball or the preseason, uh, you never really slowed down. Can you kind of take me back to that point and, and that work that you and Taylor did and, and Nate did together? And, and how much do you credit to that getting to where you are now? Yeah, you know, I think, I think it was a good point uh, in my career looking back. You know, there's, there's a, there was a definitely a learning curve there. And, you know, I, I really don't think it was too much mechanics. I felt like they're there. And also at the point I was hitting the ball hard, you know, some of it weren't falling and stuff like that. But also I just went back to the board and, you know, I, I was probably trying a little bit too hard to be a better player than I was the year before and everything like that. So I just went back to square one and started going out on the field to have a lot of fun. And, you know, I was just going to, play baseball like I knew how to play and just be myself out there. And, you know, once I can be myself out on the field, that's, that's when I'm at my best. Yeah, thank you. Nate Allen. Uh, Heston, as far as this year, the little time you had at first base, how much do you think that will help you, you know, add into your versatility? Yeah, you know, I, I think it will help a little bit maybe going forward if, uh, the Orioles want to move me around the field to play a little first uh, along with my outfield, you know, whatever it is, you know, we'll just see what happens. But I'm, I'm pretty sure from talking to them, they, they want to keep me in the corner outfield. Thanks. Uh, Zach Martin and Amarillo. Hey, Heston, how's it going today? Um, first question is just going to be, I really want – we're doing kind of an origin story with you, and I just kind of want you to talk about kind of growing up in Amarillo, playing baseball for Randall. What was that time in your life like? Oh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun, especially, you know, playing at Randall. Uh, there was a group of 10 of us that had played baseball together since, like, seventh, eighth grade. So we're all best friends, and we're able to play through high school together and all that. So, you know, the whole time it was, it was a blast for me and everything with all those guys. Um, so, um, about those guys, have they um, been able to uh, reach out to you since you've been drafted? And just kind of what are some of the words they've been able to tell you? Yeah, no, a lot of a lot of them were uh, my good friends. So they were actually at my house last night. So they got to be there with me while I got drafted, which was which was really cool. And you know, there's obviously been a lot of my friends that reached out and congratulated me and everything like that. You know, it's, it's always good to hear back from some of your old friends and everything like that. Um, how old were you when you first started thinking 
there's a chance that I could end up going D1 one day and then maybe eventually the pros. When, when did that first kind of kick into your head? Man, I've probably been dreaming about it ever since I was a kid. But once I started getting attention from D1 schools, that's when I knew it was more realistic and less of a dream. Uh, and that probably would have been about the time I was like freshman, sophomore in high school. Exactly. Okay, that, that's all. That's all we needed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Pete, did you have anything? Yeah, uh, has some silly question, but what's the uh, difference between being drafted in the thirty-sixth round and then being drafted number two overall? Oh shoot, man! It's it's definitely totally different. You know, the thirty-sixth round. It really wasn't. It was just kind of an honorary thing because they wanted to tie their name to me. And, you know, be, that would be a second overall pick. That's, man, that was something I dreamed about as a kid. And, you know, it takes a lot of things to go right to end up in that spot. And, you know, it's, it's surreal. It's really hard for me to explain uh, all the emotions and everything that overtake you in that moment. But it, it's definitely the greatest uh, – emotions I've ever had in my life. When you got uh, drafted by the Mariners in 2017, what were you, uh, what were you up to? Uh, I was actually, I was with my parents. Uh, we were driving to Houston uh, for a tournament because uh, I knew, I knew I wanted, I was already going to college and that's what I told everyone. And, you know, I was going to play summer ball to get some at bats. So we're, we're just on the road driving, and then they, they called me or whatever. All right, man. Appreciate it. Congrats. Thank you. Kyle Deckelbaum, do you have anything? Yeah, uh, Heston, the, the money. Um, how does a college kid from Amarillo, Texas, wrap his mind around, you know, the ballpark of $8 million? Yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely a life-changing amount, but – you know, luckily I grew up in my parents' family business and I worked in it all the time. And, you know, they, they taught me the value of a dollar and, you know, I understand that. And, you know, it's definitely really hard to come across something like that. So, you know, you got to be smart. And also just, you know, I'm probably just going to save most of it for a rainy day because I really, I don't need too much in life to be happy, honestly. So there's no big ideas for a big uh, first purchase or anything? Uh, not right now, you know, uh, I, I really, I'm really not eyeing anything. I'm just trying to, trying to go play baseball again soon, honestly. Um, I was just going to ask you about that because, you know, you have the shortened season, all signs point to there being no minor league season. What do you think about possibly not playing any games for what could be more than a full year? Man, that would, that would definitely be weird for all of us, which, Hopefully that won't be the case, but if, if it is, we'll, we'll just have to make it work somehow, you know, maybe getting a lot of live at bats off of certain pitchers or maybe scrimmages amongst the organizations at the spring training. But, you know, it, it definitely will. I think it will be tough for the game if there's no baseball for this next year, just from a fan level and also for a player standpoint, you know, you, Getting out there playing every day is the best way to get better and improve. Thanks, Essen. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, Hutch, did you have anything else? Yeah, I actually just thought of something. Uh, Heston, you know, usually when the draft happens, spring training's long gone, you know, in March and everything. But with the possibility of the, the baseball season starting up eventually, uh, spring training uh, possibly, do you, do you think you might get to go to spring training with the Orioles? Is that something you'd want to do? Or have you talked to them about that? Man, I, I have no clue if that's in the works or whatever. It's, man, whatever they call me and whatever they want me to do, whether it's working out at their spring training facility or coming in practice, whatever it is, you know, that's, you know, they're my boss now and whatever they want me to do, you know, that's, that's what I'll do. It's, you know, it's, it's a job now. So they, 
whatever they say goes and uh, I'm just their worker. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Heston. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, Heston, if you don't mind, uh, you, you met, referenced your dad last night. So what, what are your parents' first names? And also the fact that you worked in a water store with them and all, how did that help you become a, maybe a self-starter, motivated type person? Uh, my parents, uh, Dave and Jody, uh, I'll spell it just D-A-V-E, and then my mom's is J-O-D-Y. And, uh, you know, just being in that family business, like ever since I was, I was five, I was trying to do stuff to help them out. And, you know, I always tell my parents, they, they work seven days a week because that's what they had to do with a small business. They got up every day, went to work, came home. So that's what I grew up around. When I was a little kid, I didn't think of anything else. I thought every day you got up, you went to work and then you just lived, lived it on repeat for a while. And my dad always worked hard and, you know, luckily my parents, you know, that as I got older and their business got older and they were growing their business, you know, they, they were improving it and everything got better and they started slowly expanding it and everything. So I saw that they started from nothing and they were able to work so hard for 30 plus years and now they've earned something that's super amazing and they worked for it so that taught me as a kid if I want to do something great you know I gotta I gotta start from the bottom and I need to work as hard as I can and if I do that maybe I'll be able to claw my way to the top they go to work today oh yeah they will they they were working yesterday they they took like a half day yesterday. They worked in the morning and then they got ready for the draft and they're at work right now and uh they'll they'll be back maybe later. They may they said they may try to knock off a little early today so we can hang out a little bit more. Extend the celebration a little longer, huh? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Aston. That's that's it for me, Kyle. Thanks, Sam. Um uh... Matt Jones, did you have any more? No, I'm good. Thank you. Nate? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to unmute everybody, and if you've got one, let me know. I just have one more, Kyle, just for fun. I got one more too, Kyle. Got, and again, just for fun. <laughs> Hope I don't steal Phil's. Hey, uh, Heston. Listen, go ahead. Hey, Heston. Uh, you know your your dog Oreo got a lot of love last night uh, on national TV and kind of went viral with his reaction after your announcement. How how's your dog doing today? Uh, I think she's a little worn out from all the people being over at the house, and I think she she was pumped up too with all the people being there. And she just mm -hmm. I think it was just everyone's reaction being super loud. You know, she kind of freaked out or whatever. But, you know, that was that was cool. And that was one thing my family and I had talked about. We were like, uh, Are she, you gonna I was sitting on the couch like one day or whatever when we we're setting up the cameras. And my mom was like, are you going to let her do that when you're getting drafted? And then we're like, shoot, like, I don't see why not. Like, whatever, let's go for it. <laughs> Are you going to be sad to leave her behind uh, when you have to, to leave home? Because you've kind of gotten comfortable over the past couple months with having her around, or do you get to take her with you? Uh, I, my parents aren't going to let me take her with me. And being a minor league baseball player, it's really tough to support a dog because you're on the road so much and you leave whenever, whatever. But I'll definitely FaceTime my mom quite a bit just so I can see uh, Oreo and then maybe say hi to my mom or whatever. Thanks, Austin. Bill. Heston, I'm sorry to do this to you. This is my favorite picture in all the time that I've been doing Arkansas baseball. <laughs> right here. All right? Bro, that's awesome. I like that one too. I want to know what led to this. And when did you figure, who asked you, and when did you figure you'd put the, the hands on Connor's shoulder? Because that's really what makes the picture and gives it the Step Brothers. Yeah, so Connor and I have all, we're the, we've been best buds ever since he got there. We always hang out together, whatever. And, you know, even since this whole thing, we keep in touch. Or when I'm back in Fayetteville, I always hang out with him. 
uh, we were just, it was picture day or whatever. And Connor was like, he's like, dude, we're pretty much like stepbrothers. And I was like, I was like, no, we're not. <laughs> I was like, no, we're not. Like, whatever. He's like, dude, we got to do that picture though. Like, even though we're not, like, we got to do that picture. And I was like, I was like, okay, man, whatever. And then uh, the photographer, we're going to do it. And he was like, all right, like, if y'all are going to do this, like, we're going to make this absolutely perfect. Like, everything's going to be to a T. And we're like, okay, whatever. Like, tell us what to do. So it took like five minutes, but it was totally worth it to get that one snapshot. It's, I mean, did we just become best friends? It's perfect, man. It was so well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly